Okay, so next recipe, um, no squash in this one, I promise. Um, <laughs> actually, I wanted to do the furthest thing from it. So we want, you know, it's getting colder. Uh, we wanted to use some ingredients, something a little more tropical. Um, something to, <laughs> to remind, remind you, us yes, of summer. <laughs> take us away, a little escape for a little bit. This is a love letter to the summer that we had. Um, right. And again, big flavors. We're working with really big flavors here. Um, if if they're too, you know, they're too intense or they're just not your your speed and, and maybe like cilantro I'm pointing to because most people hate cilantro, but um, you can definitely swap this up. Um, you can change it up with, with some different ingredients and use it in the same manner. So we're making a paste. So we're gonna make, this is more uh, like Thai inspired. We're using some really nice fresh Thai flavors. Uh, so we have some cilantro. Again, <laughs> don't have to do cilantro. What would you suggest if people don't like cilantro? Uh, I mean, go go with another soft herb. Uh, like so a a parsley, parsley would be on the much milder side, mm -hmm. uh, but mint is a, you know would be fantastic in here. Mint is really nice. Uh, dill dill would be great with fish. Uh, we're gonna use some green onion, so some scallion, and I'm blending this up. So big, large chunks is okay. It's gonna all go in here. Makes it a lot easier when you know that you're blending it. You don't have to worry about making your cuts look even or perfect. Just all goes right in. With the ginger, uh, again, I, I could throw it in whole, but you can grate it as well. The same like you with the garlic. This uh, great ingredient. Does anyone know what that is? Yes. Lemongrass, yes. You guys are getting better. Yeah. It looks like I picked it up off the ground outside. <laughs> but. Um, Beautiful flavor, and if this is great whole, it's very, very fibrous, uh, so a lot, oftentimes it's used in like stocks or soups, and you let, leave it whole, and what you do is you would bruise it a little bit, and I, I'll pass this one around. If you want a touch of heat, this is obviously optional, but a little bit of red chili, and these red chilies you find, these are the, the most common ones you probably find in the grocery store. They're not too bad, but to mild, you know, take out even more of that, that kick, you just want to remove the seeds and the vein. So you can cut it in half like this, and then use your knife, kind of drag through it a little bit. So these do have quite a protective effect. So we have some really big flavors here. Um, now we're going to add our liquid. So lime, again, I want, I want to use the whole thing as much as I can. So zest is going to go in. We're going to use the juice of one lime as well. Again, really big, vibrant flavors. And this is great, especially for those who are not the biggest fish fans. You can add some complimentary flavors to, I don't want to say mask the, the fish taste, but. <laughs> So fish, another reason many people don't eat it is because it's very confusing. How, do you, how are you going to remember which type of fish you should be going for? So I, I did give a website there that you can go to called oceanwise.ca. And if you go there, what I like about it is sometimes things are changing. Um, I'll give you guys some general rules about what you can choose. But if you go to that website, it'll give you a list of the best ones that are sustainable for the environment. It also tells you the ones that are lowest in chemicals like mercury and things like that. And so it's important to try to minimize the amount of mercury that we're getting in our diets because it can affect your brain health, right? So especially for pregnant women and children, they want to choose lower mercury fish because it affects brain development as well. So especially important in those populations, but for all of us, we want to limit the amount of heavy metals that we're getting. So I would recommend use that website. If you have a smartphone, they even have an app that you can download so that when you're actually at the store or at the fish market, you can look at it and say, oh, okay, you know, you don't have to memorize too much. But for your salmon, you want to go for the Pacific versus the Atlantic. It's lower in mercury. Um, and you want to stay away from your farm salmon because it tends to be higher in other chemicals that aren't so good for our health. But there are some other really great options. Mm -hmm. I find people always use salmon as the go-to because we hear about it. It's on restaurant menus all the time. But there's some other great, great options. We like to use steelhead trout here. So that's what we're using today. Comes from Newfoundland. Um, steelhead trout. It looks a lot like salmon. It tastes a lot like salmon. Um, very the price sustainable point. choice. Yeah, the price point is very similar, if not even a little bit cheaper sometimes. Um, but it's a 
Excellent choice to use. Yeah. We like Arctic char is another really good one that you can try that will be lower in mercury as well. So yeah, that's a fabulous question. Thank you. And so uh, that's it for the paste. Plug it in again. <laughs> We're using a lot of machinery today. I've noticed. <laughs> Because you don't want to work as hard. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's it. Just buzz it up just until you get a really nice, oh, and the, the smell is really, really great. It just pops right out of the food processor. It's so refreshing. So our paste is ready to go. Um, and this can be used with any sort of protein. The fish, it's, it's really nice. Um, now the skin, sometimes you find the fish with the skin on top. You can, if you like the skin, you can definitely use that. Um, if you have, if you're buying it from a, a fish store that has a fishmonger, has a, a seafood specialist there, you can tell them, and you can tell them to remove the skin, you can tell them to, to take out the pin bones, they should be able to do any of that. Just be nice to them and they should be able to do <laughs> You tell them what to do. No, ask them nicely to remove the skin. Uh, if you want to do it yourself, um, it's, it's pretty easy and what I would suggest is just take it slow and, and practice it a few times. So you take your knife, uh, this, is, this is just a long, you can find like boning knives, this is just a, a long knife that I have. Um, you want something that's longer than the width of the fish, that's, that's the most important thing. And so what I'm going to do is put it closest to the edge of the cutting board as possible and then from the tail end down I'm going to just slightly cut in, but not through the skin, just through the flesh, and then I'm gonna twist the knife. From here, what I'm gonna do is put my hand on top and push, I'm putting pressure with this hand so that it's touching the skin, and I want it as flat as possible. I don't wanna cut through the skin, I just want it to rest on the skin and let, it, let the knife do the work and kind of glide all the way across. And so I have my hand on top, again, keeping that edge down until you come all the way through. Sometimes some of the skin gets back, but that's that's pretty clean. All right, so now that really, really flavorful paste is gonna go on top. I'm going heavy, this is a lot, I just realized, but um, you can go as light as you want on there. Would you save a bit and serve it on the side? Yeah. If people wanted some absolutely. extra flavor? Absolutely, you can definitely do that. So you wanna spread it on. And we're gonna cook this a little different today. Um, I was walking, when I was walking to the grocery store, I found these beautiful Napa cabbages. On the walk? No, when I was walking to the oh. grocery store. <laughs> I, said, the I was walking to the grocery store and I found some cabbages. Not on the way there, no. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and what you can do, and you can do this with any sort of cabbage, any sort of like kind of hearty lettuce. And what we're gonna do is actually put the piece of fish right in between. Ooh, like this. Very nice. What this is going to do is actually going to be, it's a really nice gentle way of cooking fish. I know that a lot of people are kind of afraid of cooking fish because they don't want to kind of destroy it or make a mess in the it kitchen. It's dry. Yeah. It's dry. So this is a nice way to keep it moist. Um, it's actually not touching any heat surface. Mm -hmm. So you're not in danger of kind of like tearing it apart or damaging the fish. Um, and it keeps that marinade inside. It keeps it really nice and flavorful. I did it loosely like this. I mean, you can even tie it up with butcher's twine, make a nice little bundle. But that's all I'm gonna do there. And then to finish this off, this is something I tried yesterday and it worked out. Uh, we're gonna use quinoa. We're gonna cook everything together. Same time, yes. one dish. <laughs> I don't have to do anything on the stove top. Um, and it's, it's a really, really simple way to do it. So quinoa is gonna go in. Uh, we're using a cup here to cook to cook quinoa. Um, it's usually about two to one, the ratio between water to yeah, exactly. Very very simple. So quinoa goes in, rinse it first um, to get some of that bitterness off. Mm -hmm. That's uncooked. That's going to go in. This was boiling at one point. I'm not going to wait for it, but boiling water. Um, and you, what you want to do is go a little less than two. So I'm actually going to go a cup and a half to one, and I'll tell you why in a second. Measure this. <laughs> you don't, yeah, you don't want it too dry or too... Yeah. 
Wet. So that's going to go in. So we have our water, one and a half cups to one cup of quinoa. And then we're going to add some fun ingredients. So pineapple. Love pineapple. Mm. That's going to go right in there. And so the reason I added only a cup and a half of water is because I'm adding the pineapple, right? So I, when I made this yesterday, I added two cups of water, added the pineapple, and there was a lot of liquid left over. It's because there's a lot of liquid in the pineapple. So a cup and a half plus your cup of pineapple works just fine. Red pepper, you can put anything in this. Just the colors are nice. Ooh, I love it. A little bit of red onion. Beautiful. Just a pinch of salt. Just about a half a, not even, like a teaspoon of olive oil. You want to season it now, just to get it all in there. And we'll give this just a little bit of a stir through. Now you could put these little packages right on top, or I found it actually works a little bit better if you separate it. It's a little bit of parchment paper. Push that down, and then put your, this is like Ikea cooking. <laughs> I love when there's only one container to clean as well. It makes things a lot easier. You don't have to worry about timing different pots and that's always my problem, trying to get everything ready at the same time. Uh, and then what you want to do is seal the entire thing Cover it up. with foil. Remember to cook the quinoa, we want that liquid to steam in there. All right, and that's going to go into the oven uh, for about 25 minutes or so. If the quinoa is a little on the liquidy side, you can take your, your, um, your fish out and then just pop it back in. But it, it worked out pretty good. So, made a bit of a smaller batch. I'll show you what it looks like. So that's it. So here's our little Napa cabbage. Napa wraps. And you can see the, the fish. It's got that really nice paste and it's protected in there. Kind of looks like a, a fish tail there. <laughs> a little bit of green onion, maybe a little cilantro, and that's it. Mm -hmm.